Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt. So I did a lecture last night live. It took an hour and I posted it on YouTube and the audio is bad and the video is bad, the quality of it. So I'm redoing the same slides. I'll keep that live one up. There's good questions at the end and I was hilarious. And anyways, but for the sake of education, I'm going to go through these slides in this format with good audio, good video. Okay, so let's talk about protein. The title is uh, Protein Quantities and Qualities. And um, in the last two years, I've been teaching the uh, ratio of two to one fat versus protein plus carbs. And um, what I've learned is that protein does not affect ketosis. And I'll show you a slide. I did a slide earlier, about a month or six weeks ago. But there are places like dietdoctor.com, perfectketo.com, Charlie Foundation. They say I'll have moderate protein. Dr. Berg says it too. They all claim that keto diet is moderate protein, which does work, but less, it does work but it's less sustainable and satisfying than what I'm going to teach you. Um, we've seen it reverse heart disease, diabetes, and 11 cancers. The whole moderate protein thing does still work. But let's um, change it a little bit to make it more satisfying. I'm going to start off with this unified theory of food from Brian Sanders. He's got a podcast called Peak Human, and he's raising money for a documentary that he's making called Food Lies. And so his unified theory is this. Your body needs protein, vitamins, and minerals to maintain the structure. And then you have two fuels, carbohydrates and fat. So you pick one of those fuels, pick fat, get the carbohydrates down low, and then you get in ketosis because the carbohydrates are low. That is the one factor that determines whether or not you get into ketosis. So now if you're, once you're in ketosis and you need to lose weight, now take that fat and lower that down too. Keep the protein higher. So now you're burning the fat that you're carrying around. If you're an endurance athlete, keep the fat up so you're burning the fat that you're consuming. So um, what I just said here, let's see, I'll make sure. Now low carbs is less than 20 grams of carbohydrates. I was trained in the late 90s that it's less than 75 grams of carbohydrates. But in order to get into ketosis, you gotta get low, like less than 20. And for some people, maybe less than 50. But if you're less than 20, you're basically not eating any plants at all, period. And you end up eating what's called the carnivore diet. So keeping the protein high means 125 to 200 grams of protein per day. And I have studies that show people in ketosis at the higher amounts of protein. And I experimented personally. I was in ketosis and my protein intake for the day was 198. So almost 200 grams of protein. I was still in a nice state of ketosis. I have a slide on this here in a, in a, very soon. Here, and I'm promoting the people that I learned from. Here's a woman, L. Amber O'Hearn. She created this statement right here. Eat meat, not too little, mostly fat. It's concise, it's intelligent, and it's truth. And it's the opposite of what Michael Pollan said about probably t 12 years ago. He's an author. He said, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. So there's that vegan sort of vegetarian route. I'm not so much a fan of that. Um, satiety is key. So when you eat meat, mostly fat, satiety um, makes intermittent fasting easier, ketosis easier, results are easier, and it's all a lot more fun than stuffing your face with plants. Here's my personal experiment. This is eight days ago. Um, over the last four months, I've been heading towards the carnivore diet, but eight days ago, I ate 198 grams of protein, 130 grams of fat, and seven grams of carbs. Here's my food. Well, I had like 2,000 calories. Here's my food. Two rib steaks for breakfast, a good fat bar for lunch, which I didn't even really need because they had two steaks for breakfast. My dinner was seven eggs scrambled in bacon grease with cheese on top. And the seven grams of carbs probably came from the cheese. Okay, there's that. After dinner, about a half hour later, I tested my blood. My glucose was low at 95, which is great. My ketones were up at 1.3, which is great. My glucose ketone index was four, which indicates moderate nutritional ketosis, which is great. And I felt good all day, strong all day, brain working all day, and, um, hardly ever thought about food. And that's satiety, and you get that from eating healthy fats. Animal fats are healthy for you. And I've done this on several other days. There was a, actually Sunday, so four days ago, 
I had a steak for breakfast, and I worked, um, not manual labor, a little bit, but brain power, and I was with a friend, and at 4.30, I was hungry, okay? And then at 5.30, I was still hungry, and at 6 o'clock, we arrived at the restaurant. So I felt hungry, but I wasn't hangry. It wasn't blood sugar crashing. It was, I was in ketosis. And my stomach was like telling me, hey, go get some food. And an hour later, hey, go get some food. So I wasn't like throwing my elbows at people in the way between me and the refrigerator. That's what happens when you eat healthy fat and protein is you have this calmness and your hunger is different. And it's, you, it's different. You need to know the difference between hangry and hungry in your body. Okay, next slide. So I've done this with my patients too. Here's a high school kid. I told him three months ago, just eat meat. And that's it. I didn't have him count his macronutrients. I didn't have him use chronometer. I didn't have him look at the ratios of fat, protein, carbs. I just said, eat meat. He's down 48 pounds in three months. And he's physically strong. He's killing it in the gym, lifting weights. And he's doing great. And it's super healthy. He's in ketosis. He's cleaning up all the fat um, in and around his, his uh, arteries, his, his uh, organs, around his waist. Um, here's, a, here's a good story to try to position maybe where you're at. Um, I have a guy who, he's been with me for many years. He and his wife retired out of state. They, I see him once a year. And he probably needs to lose maybe 50 pounds. So when his wife says, well, we saute vegetables and we eat salads and we, meet, we eat meat every day. And that follows the rules that I was saying for a number of years where your carbs are 75 grams per day. So you're still eating salad and vegetables, but he's not losing weight doing that. So he's got to get his carbs down less than 20 grams a day. And I told him, just eat meat, and that's it, nothing else. And he was so happy. He had the biggest smile on his face. I said, go carnivore, mimic our ancestors. All right, here's the slide that shows how your protein intake does not correlate with whether or not you're in ketosis. I showed this slide before. You may, have be, you may recognize it from an earlier video. So in this study, this, these people had, were in deep ketosis here at this blue peak. And you go down, they had the low amount of carbohydrates and their protein intake was here. And with this study, they were not in very deep ketosis. Their carbohydrates were higher and the protein here was at this level. You can see the peaks and the valleys correlate with each other. Here's this peak, here's this valley. Here's this valley, here's this peak. So it all comes down to carbohydrates. Your carbohydrates are the single biggest factor. They're the only factor. Well, they are the biggest factor for getting into ketosis. Now the protein here gradually goes up. If protein affected ketosis, you would see that the ketone levels would be higher here and then gradually going down. Okay, so just I'm just emphasizing protein intake does not correlate with ketosis. And I proved that with my experiment where I had 198 grams of protein in this day and I was still in a nice level of ketosis after dinner at the end of the day. I, I learned a lot of this information from Dr. Ted Naiman. I got sucked into Twitter June of... 2018 and um, I've been just a lot of reading a lot of learning and what he did is he has this nutrient to energy ratio all right so protein is the most essential nutrient vitamins and minerals and protein maintain the structure of your body whole food fat is an essential nutrient essential is actually a technical term in the bio, uh, biological food nutrition sciences it's essential it means you have to have it in your diet it's essential you get these nutrients from your diet. Okay, carbohydrates are not essential. Carbohydrates exist only to provide energy, period, that's it. And then added fat only provides extra energy. So you can get into ketosis eating meat and eggs and butter. And if you add fat, fat bombs and um, bulletproof coffee, that provides extra energy. But you can have too much fat and not lose weight while being in ketosis. All right, but we're gonna talk about this nutrient energy relationship here in the, next, in the next few slides. And this is key, this is the point of what I'm, um, why I'm showing you these slides. And now the rest of these slides are created by Dr. Naiman. And he's brilliant with this. 
and you can find him on Twitter. He's most active on Twitter. So the standard American diet is 100 grams of protein average. We're just talking in blocks here. And 100 grams of fat and then 300 grams of carbohydrates, bread, etc. The new diet really should be higher protein. Uh, 200 grams of, of, of protein, 100 grams of fat, that stays the same. And the carbohydrates come down to 100 like this. This is a very simplistic way of looking at how your diet should be, how everybody's diet should be, how the USDA food pyramid should be. It should look like this. Okay, now the point here of this slide is that how much energy do you have to eat through to get to the protein? In the example of these, uh, this candy right here, the protein is 10%. The rest of it is 90% is energy. So he created this scale right here, and this food right here would be would make you gain weight. This red arrow shows weight gain, and the green part right here, that's weight loss. Okay, so in this example, you're eating mostly energy, very little protein. So here's a blow up of that scale. Protein on this side, energy on this side. And you get this ratio. So at the very bottom, you have the worst kind of fat, the worst oils, this yellow, mazzola, canola sort of garbage, and then white flour, white sugar. Add those two things. Those are both just energy, no protein. You're going to gain weight. And most American food is right down here, all the way down here at the bottom. So if we go all the way up here, we have protein and um, egg whites. This is just protein, protein. So no energy. So, um, and then in the middle, we have a fatty ribeye steak, and we have eggs right here. So you can, you can reduce the fat and reduce the carbs from here up, and you'll lose weight and maintain your protein. And then you, down here, you add the fat, add the carbs, reduce the protein, and you're going to gain weight. So having said that, the one thing that um, I've said and all these other dietdoctor.com and Dr. Berg and Charlie Foundation and perfectketo.com, we've all been led, we've all been taught from earlier researchers that protein will prevent ketosis. And I'm just, I'm just hammering it home. It's not a true statement. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here's your, your numbers you're going to look for. So, so target your protein intake at one gram per day per pound of desired body weight from properly raised animals. So if you want to weigh 160 pounds, and then you, you target for 160 grams of protein per day. I don't care if you weigh 300 pounds or 500 pounds, you target 160. That's your target weight. Make that your grams of protein per day. Limit your carbs. It says unlimited fiber from green vegetables but limit net carbs to less than about 50 grams a day. We're going to go through some examples to hammer this home. So your net carbs are going to be less than 50 grams a day. It may be less than 20. With my current patients, I just target for less than 20 right now so we can have success sooner. Okay, then balance your fat. If you have too much fat in your body, skip the high-fat foods. That's the bulletproof coffee. That's the fat bombs. And eat only from fats from eggs and lean meat. Okay. So <clears throat> here's some examples. The standard American diet, and Dr. Naiman did the numbers on this, has its ratios in the fat gain area. So the energy is high, the protein is low com relative to each other. The worldwide hunter-gatherer average is right between maintenance and fat loss, which makes perfect sense. Okay, next slide. Another example, again, here's a standard American diet in the uh, red fat gain area. And then right above it is a purple arrow. That's the Eat Lancet recommendations that just came out a few weeks ago, sponsored by and paid for by some billionaires. One couple in particular have invested in the Impossible Burger, you know, the, the next craze of garbage, fake meat. And they want to they try to save the world from global warming. So they jet around in their private jet wherever they want to go on vacation and conferences. And they tell you to not eat meat. And do you know that there are 10% less cows now than 20 years ago? So uh, beef production does not contribute to global warming. Let's just put it that way. 
So the Eat Lancet recommendations that came out a few weeks ago are just as stupid as the standard American diet. And they say you can only have about this much meat, which is like a quarter of an egg. So just ignore the Lancet. All those food researchers and medical food doctors, just they're just all idiots and they hate you and they want you to be ill as they jet around in their private jets. <laughs> all right, the My Plate recommendations, same exact thing, the Obama era, same uh, information, uh, different uh, stupid people. Okay, let's go over some individual foods. Here are some uh, apples. Let's look at the apple nutrition facts. Here's the energy. We got the fat is at 0.3 grams. The carbohydrates are at 15, but you got to subtract the fiber. So the net carbohydrates are 12. So you add in the, the fat and the net carbs, you get 12.3. The protein, remember the protein sustains your body structure and integrity. It's at 0.2. So when you do the math on this, um, 0.2 divided by 12.3, you got 0.02. That is a fat gain food. Apples are a fat gain food. Okay, here's meat. So the protein's 21, the fat's at 10, there's no carbs. So it's, it's a two to one, uh, it's a 2.1 ratio of protein to energy. It is a fat loss food right here, this red arrow. And then here's oats. Okay, so the total fat is three. You can do this with your food in your pantry or at the grocery store. Total fat is at three grams, carbohydrates at 29 minus the fiber. Your total there for energy is 27 and your protein's at seven. So the PE ratio is 0.26. Oats are a fat gain food right here at this red arrow. All right, next we have all the grains. Best whole grains are oats. They still make you gain weight. Here's quinoa, barley, millet, and spelt. Here's the Worst grain, which is brown rice. All these, it's all grains. It's all fat gain food. This is an egg. So protein's at six, fat's at five. There's zero carbs. It's a 1.2. Um, it's sort of in the maintenance area right here. And here's the last one. These are Pop-Tarts. Do I have to do it for you? You can take a screenshot if you want and practice on your own. But it's in the fat gain area. They look healthy, right? They look like strawberries or something. Do, do, does protein harm kidneys? The answer is no. Um, years ago, I used to do the grand rounds online at Albert Einstein School of Medicine, and they had a whole grand round session on uh, protein does not cause harm to the kidneys. Even people with late stage renal failure, they can still eat protein that does not ca cause harm to the kidneys. I have two more slides. Now I'm going to talk about quality of protein. Liver and red meat are the highest quality protein on the planet due to myoglobin, heme iron, minerals, and fat-soluble vitamins. Of course, saturated fat is healthy, and all the amino acids are there. Plant protein, even in high quantities, as a powder, for example, does not pro do not provide the satiety that animal protein does. Satiety is king. So let's look at this last slide. Liver, no food higher in nutrients. Here's a bunch of uh, minerals, <clears throat> and liver beats out red meat, it beats out carrots, it beats out apples. Here's B vitamins, B2, B6, B12. It beats out all these other foods. Vitamin A, super high in vitamin A, and vitamin C is super high in vitamin C compared to apples and carrots. If you want vitamin C, eat liver. Um, now, can you die from eating liver because of vitamin A toxicity? No, that doesn't happen. It's never happened. Um, people say that it has, but it, that was probably more of a, a food poisoning infection issue going on. Um, synthetic vitamin A, as in the form of retinol, is uh, very toxic. So you, yeah, you can have vitamin A toxicity, but it's not real vitamin A. It's man-made synthetic A. And I think I've learned a lot from Frank Tofano uh, regarding vitamin A, retinol, and toxicity, and you can check out his uh, YouTube videos. Okay. So there's um, liver. Now, when, now, in the actual live event that I did, somebody asked me a question about eating plants for all the nutrients. And really, there's two aspects of this. Number one, if you eat high carb, you deplete the nutrients out of your body. When you eat low carb, you maintain the nutrients. The second thing, which I didn't say in that video, but I'm going to say it right now, plants have anti-nutrients. So if you have an oyster, which has 85 grams of zinc, you eat the oyster, you can measure all the zinc in the blood.
But if you add to that meal, green, like collard greens or, or spinach, for example, it will block the absorption of the zinc. So now you only have 15 grams of, of zinc in your blood from the oyster. And uh, so yeah, plants have anti-nutrients. That's how they protect themselves. They try to make you sick in some way when you eat them. That's their defense. Animals will bite you, scratch you, kick, run away. Plants produce poisons. Okay, so there you go. Now you have the good audio, good video version of this uh, series of slides. And this really sort of changes everything when it comes to getting into ketosis very easily and sustainably and having more fun with it and, and maintaining muscular strength. And now it kind of, um, when you look at this sort of eating, like the carnivore diet eating, I may have said this before in other videos, but it's similar to the old school Atkins era. And in his book, he says some people need to get below 20 grams of carbo carbohydrates to get into ketosis initially. And after a week or two, now they're in it. And now they can raise their carbs up if they want. Um, he got his information from the protein sparing modified fast diet of 1965 from Indiana University. And that information comes from earlier, even in the late 1800s, there's several books where people say, hey, just eat meat and you'll feel good and it'll reverse a lot of chronic problems. And another person asked a question about um, meat preservation, sodium nitrate, what about antibiotics, what about estrogen in the cows? And my answer was, you gotta eat 10 cows a year in order to be poisoned um, by whatever commercial farming methods are used in the production of beef. And um, regarding um, pl uh, food poisoning, plants are more food poisoning than, anim than animal products. And the last time I was sick, it was from purple organic carrots. And I had got food poisoning from that. I don't tell people to avoid purple organic carrots just like no vegan should tell people to avoid meat because of possible E. coli or something like that. So plants are more food poisoning. So I think that's it at the top, off the top of my head. Those are the things I wanted to go over. I um, hope you enjoy this. Feel free to take screenshots of this, study up on this. And I'm kinda, I have to go back to some of my earlier videos from two years ago. I'll make some comments in the, on the comment section about, uh, you know, watch this video to update the information. Um, but like I said, what we we're doing earlier, we we're still getting great results. I'm just tweaking it a little bit for more sustainability and for more pleasure, basically. More eating pleasure. All right, if you like this information, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. And if you want to be a patient, it's best to call us. We do have the email info at the NHCAA.com. Either way, you can get a hold of us. All right, see ya. Bye.